Okay, welcome back. And as you can see here, we have this piece of uh, video technology history made by Ferguson, video star. And I got this recently off eBay from a nice guy called Ross. So big thanks out to you. And uh, the, a bit of the history on this. This was his uh, great uncles who passed away. And um, yeah, it's in really good condition. Um, you know, they they couldn't get it working. They turned it on and got it powered up. As you can see the clock works and uh, everything was working until I got hold of it <laughs> I put a tape in and uh, I f pressed fast forward I think or rewind and it worked and then I think I pressed play and then it just locked up so I got a feeling the belts well I know one of the belts has slipped off because I've had it open and one of the belts has slipped, so it probably needs a new set of belts. It's got about four or five belts going on, maybe more. And this is the, um, I think this is the first version, because there was two. There's a guy, he's got a few uh, videos on YouTube, I'll link uh, in the description. And he shows how to... Uh, fix these things and get them running and mechanical issues I mean this thing is this thing is mental it really is it's such a nostalgia hit for me because this was the very first video that we got back in the day it was either this one or the second version but it had you know the piano keys like this had the exact same layout I'm not sure if this was exactly the same here well, you can see the original dust there and you can see all the settings for the um, the TV analog TV reception I remember ITV I think was 23 BBC one was 26 um, I think channel 4 was 30. I think BBC Two was 32 and Channel 5 was 37 and caused a lot of problems with uh, people's you know game consoles and other devices being tuned to the similar frequency but sadly all that's gone now all the analog TV is gone all digital but um, as you can see Got some nice green lights here and you could tune it tune it eight channels here even though we only had five <laughs> to you, whatever your preference was I haven't even set the clock this before so bear with me and I'm all working out So we've got a 24 hour clock, the minutes, and then if you want to set the timer, uh, and you can set it to go off as well. So set it to go on at that time and off at that time. Is that right? On. Right, so it goes on at that time, off at that time. So we've got the tracking button, we've got a mic input, there's a remote input around the back. Um, we've got TV or camera input, we've got um, timer mode as you see there, video mode or TV mode. So um, yeah, when you want to record analog TV put it into that mode obviously for playback put it in video and then timer 
it should record when you set the clock to the time you want it to record. Um, I wish I could show you this opening because it's it's hilarious the way this pops up. It's on such a powerful spring, it's got no dampening. When you press that it just pops up like a toaster. And um, but yeah, I'll have to sort it out and get the get the mechanism free and put some new belts on. I've got to take it apart again to measure the belts to make sure I get the right set. Might need a new pinch roller, might not. Everything looks in really good condition. It's just over time rubber um, loses its elasticity, so it needs replacing. So. I say I've got a really, really good deal on this. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a tape playing now. How good the quality of the picture is, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe there's some capacitors blown. On a quick visual inspection inside, I didn't see anything leaky or anything like that. So, fingers crossed, it plays fine mechanically. It looks clean. It doesn't look gunked up or anything inside. Um, I don't think anybody's touched it except me because <laughs> the screws were all the original screws there was no wear on the screws nobody's been inside this machine I don't think except me pretty easy to access everything the top panel comes off the bottom panel comes off the side panels come off and um, I say this was the very first VCR we had and it, we didn't even own it we rented it weekly and this is the the very first player um that i would have watched our very first tape which was first blood and we rented that i think we had it for about a week it was probably a pirate copy because this machine was notorious for having for being the pirate as the choice because it had no macro vision on it so that's a nice thing, nice bit of history as well. So I'd love to be able to play a copy of uh, First Blood on this, <laughs> and maybe make my own pirate copies with this machine. So let me flip it round and show you the back. Okay, so as you can see, that's the model number three V twenty two. So I've had a struggle just trying to move it. I'm out of breath. It is really, really heavy. I mean. I haven't weighed it, but I know it's got to be about about 15 kilos, I think it is. It's really heavy. <laughs> so you've got the old inputs for video in and out. No SCART leads. Only connected to the TV by RF and aerial in. And there's the jack for the remote. So you'd have a remote on a very long cable and a, a wired box. And I think the basic, you just have basic controls like start and stop, maybe record. And you've got a massive fuse in there, you've got your on off switch, and then you've got your figure of eight power cord. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting this working. But even just having it, it's just bringing back so many memories, the smell of it. You know, it's got that vintage electronic smell. Um, and uh, maybe I'll show you some pictures of it, oh, the insides of it. But I say there's another guy that does it much better than me. And uh, I'll link his videos in the description. You can check out the guts of this thing and how he gets his two versions working. So I'm pretty sure this is the very first version because it's got the longer belt going by his videos. So that's the one I need to order. But the seller on eBay wants me to measure the belt. So I have to open the bloody thing again. Okay. So yeah, just another... Many big shout out, big thanks to uh, Ross. Don't know what's going on with this. This, this is not moved on, is it? On. Hmm. 
o'clock day. Maybe because the mechanism's not working, it's not engaged. But as you can hear, the motor's going, it's trying to work. And I think it will be pretty well. Don't want to jinx it. Hopefully, it's just the belts and there's nothing else. Um, I don't think there will be. I'm, I'm confident. I don't remember this audio dub button. Oh, I don't remember ever using it. I do remember having a bootleg copy of ET and playing around with these two buttons and accidentally recording over a section of the uh, film <laughs> with Coronation Street. Oh, oh Jesus, no, stop, stop. <laughs> As a kid, I was panicking. I thought I was going to get in massive trouble, but I don't think anybody found out. It wasn't a very popular film, E.T., in our house. <laughs> Not like First Blood. I remember, I remember watching that film. I'd creep down in the middle of the night and stick that tape on, watch it over and over, so... That's why I'm mentally scarred by Stallone, <laughs> and I love it so much. But yeah, I say the panels on this need regluing. This one's loose. This one comes off when you take the panels off. This bit is loose. You can see it's just been glued down with some epoxy, so that's easy enough to attach. At least all the bits are there. You know, some of these you get and. Panels are missing, you know, wear and tear. This one's been looked after, you can tell. And I'm gonna look after it. And I'm really privileged to own it. So I will get it working one way or another. <laughs> and I will wear, upload a follow-up um, follow video. All right, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Bye-bye.